Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 35th T Tuesday Update. Let's get into it. Uh, last time we set a six week goal for episode 40 to actually have a ring lotus of tiles, 133 tiles, uh, mounted on frames, mounted on a wall, and running the MFM code sufficiently so that they could be benchmarked with dreg physics. This is the first week. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of action, uh, uh, and I have a lot to talk about, so let's go. Uh, um, in the past week, uh, a lot of progress on how we're going to take these tiles, collect them together into clumps, and be able to manage them, put them on the wall, talk about that. Uh, uh, and then I want to do a demo of some of the improvements in the software. Uh, uh, my goal for next week is that we take the MM. MFMS, the Movable Feast Machine Simulator, uh, and get the code forked to, to get MFMT2, which is going to be the engine that's going to run the events on the tiles. What we see now when we see the green dots just jumping around, that's actually MFMS. That's the simulator running on the tiles. So is it a simulation? Well, it is kind of because the tiles aren't talking to each other yet. So the goal for this week is to get the new version going and get it looking different enough that we can tell it's MFMT2 and not MFMS. All right, let's go. Uh, um, in the news today, our top stories. Uh, um, uh, while all this other stuff was going on with the manufacturing in Vienna and so forth, uh, I was also starting to uh, deal with trying to get the other intertile connectors, not the data and power ones, but the data only ones that are supposed to go in between the power zones. And uh, I had an order going in uh, with PCB way, needed to finish with them because we had run out of stock on the connectors that we needed. So we had to wait for stock to come in to finish the previous order. So that was going to get folded into this current one. Uh, there was a problem that the components were a lot more expensive in the second order than they were in the first one. So I had to kind of go back and forth a little bit with my Yolanda, my contact, uh, and they reviewed it to see if the price could be cheaper. And eventually the price for the components, uh, I got to be almost the same as it was on the first order, which is obviously what it should have been because the same component, in fact, in the same quantity after we had some uh, negotiations. So that order went in and uh, this past week uh, we got the sample confirmation where they make one and send you pictures of it to make sure it looks good uh, uh, so here it is this these are the circuit boards for the data only <laughs> uh, um, Intertile connectors. Uh, we only need like 200 of these or 160 of these or something uh, to complete the ring lotus uh, rather than the 400 plus of the data plus power ones. Uh, but you know, it looked fine. So I said, uh, let's go for it. And in fact, <coughs> the order shipped uh, Sunday. And so the current status as of right now is it's supposed to arrive Tuesday, June 4th. That would be today as you're watching it. In fact, it is today now. Uh, uh, but it, there's currently a clearance event, which always uh, it, it strikes terror in my heart, especially with the political and economic and international climate that we have today. So the things apparently is still in Shenzhen, and I do not believe it's going to actually be here uh, by Tuesday, uh, by the end of day today. We shall see. So that's that. Uh, uh, also, in the news, uh, ETS has been manufacturing these boards. Uh, um, uh, I picked up sixty a while ago, uh, plus an original set, and I made the I made the the uh, Lotus from that sixty. They have another hundred and twenty one ready to go. They needed a few more little parts that were some run, run short on certain things, and so this was the box of the sixty that I got way back when that I took a, a Lotus full out of. There's still tons of uh, untouched boards in this box of 60 however now uh, we whoops where is it there we go uh, we also have another box of 120 that means in my possession we have over 180 stuffed circuit boards ready to go ready for me uh, uh, 
uh, or us. I don't know. I think, you know, we're going to try to, in a week or two, maybe we'll try to arrange a, uh, a T2 tile assembly party of some sort, maybe at UNM. Uh, I'll spring for a free lunch for folks that can come in and help assemble all these darn things like we saw in the video a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully if a couple of folks are in the Albuquerque area, they might be able to help out. It could even be fun. Who knows? Uh, um, so that's happening. And, uh, and and that's it for the news. So moving on. Uh, um, oh, yeah. So uh, with the new goal of having a, a Ring Lotus on the wall, one of the goals, design and prototype, rigid frame to hold one tile, inner frame connectors, external frame anchors, and so forth. No sooner than... <laughs> to raise this goal then um in the t2 tile uh lobby uh on gitter uh andrew was was all over this he, he's a, a 3d printing guy with experience uh much more than i and there was a very uh to me, I thought a wonderful discussion of, well, how could we attach to the wall? Could we use extrusion and make frames and print things or do custom things or would acrylic or all these various possibilities uh, going by very rapidly and saying, well, that's going to run into an issue with this. Can we fix it and so forth? It was great. Um, and... Uh, so, and Andrew said, you know, could you make a diagram? Ask me, can I make a diagram showing the relative things? And so I showed, well, I, I showed the picture from the uh, the Gerber files from the from the KiCad board layout uh, with a one millimeter grid around it, so that it would actually be possible to measure the exact positions of the mounting holes and so forth. That doesn't a answer the other key question, which is how far apart are the tiles from each other? Uh, I took uh, a couple of them and I took a picture with the the ruler on it, and it looked like it was about twelve millimeters uh, from one tile to the next, with the gap all in. Is that exact? Who knows? It's not going to be perfect because there's natural slop and everything. But that was enough that Andrew was going off and thinking about all these wild things. Uh, uh, originally thinking that all these like 3D print things could attach to a uh, uh, aluminum extru standard aluminum extrusion frame. But then maybe hey, who needs the frame? Maybe just uh, <coughs> can make these things that would go together. So the the rings, these rings that he's got that are connected, each of them would stretch over several tiles and allow bringing them together and anchoring them. Uh, uh, <coughs> he had a more refined design once the idea was maybe didn't need the extrusion at all. And, and he's starting to print them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and here's the result. It, it's, it's sort of a funny looking thing, kind of a little, little bit of lips, especially in the uh, printed in red. But unbelievable. <laughs> Day one uh, of the new goal. <clears throat> Uh, right around the same time, uh, Joby said, uh, you know, okay, the, the assumption that I had been working with and that I had said was that you know, the idea was the case, the case screws, these four socket screws that we went through trouble to buy a, a month or so ago, uh, uh, would screw into standoffs and the standoffs would screw into the frame on the wall somehow. And so that if you needed to remove a tile, you'd remove the four screws and that would allow you to take it off. It would also allow you to take it, the, the tile the PCB off of the uh, tile uh, cover uh, uh, but okay you figure you take them off because you want to do it and Joby says well you know you could have a little snap fit connector so that instead of uh, unscrewing the screw to remove a tile from the wall you just pull it and it goes snap and comes off and then in fact you would have cute little uh, ball feet for the things to stand on and it would be a separate step if you actually needed to get into the case to change something or whatever then you'd unscrew the little ball foot from the case screw and open it up that way and that sounded very cool uh, but that wasn't enough just to make a suggestion he, he prototyped at least two drafts of it uh, uh, showed a cross-section of one where you know you got the this is the the foot part where and the idea was that you just take the the screw the the m3 socket cap screw and you just wang it right into the plastic and it'll sort of self tap and it'll be tight enough uh, to hold in particular to snap and pull out and uh, so he sent the uh, STL files uh, from, from, you know, he's using Fusion, I'm using Auto uh, OpenSCAD, so I needed to model it myself. Uh, <coughs> and 
so I tried his thing. I printed them up, and it, it kind of worked, and it was pretty cool. And so I started making a, a, a mock-up of it in OpenSCAD. This is one of my early versions. I had a lot of problems with uh, especially the, the little uh, lips, the little part here that are meant to hold the snap in, ending up snapping off and, and so forth. But, you know, I screwed around with it for a while. I mean, just to see. And the key that I liked about it was that I could print two of these that were pre-spaced at about 12 millimeters about the exact gap that was supposed to be between one and the next. Uh, and so that would space the uh, tiles uh, appropriately. So, uh, at the same time, Andrew said, oh yeah, the snap fit connector is a great idea, but especially if you're, not, if you're having problems with strength, that in order to make 3D printing work strong, what you want is wherever something is going to be under tension, you want the printing to run along that direction so that you have a line of plastic in the direction that's being pulled rather than multiple layers of plastic that are getting easily pulled apart. So if you make the thing square so that you could print it on its side, and, and he went up and drafted it and, and came up with a scheme where you'd take a little square and put a captive nut in it and so forth, uh, uh, and, and printed some up and, and put up uh, the STL files for that as well. So I pulled those down. This is this is his actual STL files in my slicing program. Uh, I have not yet tried to model these in OpenSCAD. Uh, I tried to print them. I had a little problem the first time, but I tried a little harder, and the second time it was looking good. And I printed up two sets of these things. So really, it's the 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 female connector, the male connector, and this is just a little demo anchor to show how the male anchor would fit into the frame. And so here they are assembled, and and, and so forth. And so he, and. And here it is <laughs> and it does have a nice little uh, like that you put it in nice snap and it comes out pretty good now unfortunately the trap nut here uh, that part uh, is a problem because there's really not enough uh, bolt uh, coming through with the bolts that I have now. It could get longer bolts, but at the moment uh, there's uh, about 2.7, 2.8 if you're lucky millimeters, and that's not actually enough to reliably grab the nut this way. Uh, uh, so at the moment I've been playing around with the Joby, just go ahead and screw straight into the plastic and making it all tight enough. Uh, um, and so I took the idea of having these pairs, having having got a little set of two, and, and make it into uh, having uh, uh, a little spacer so this gets uh, two two sides of one tile onto the next tile and also onto the uh, alternate brick tile down below a and with these uh, and I added some you know various uh, uh, improvements eventually I got to these so these are the little feet they have a little hex uh, nut at the bottom for holding them to screw on it's got a little washer built into them which also makes them print better because it gives them a slightly bigger base and and I printed up a bunch of the straps and the pairs and the nuts and oh yeah and and <laughs> at first I was using uh, pliers but now you see you need uh, a, a uh, I made a wrench for the thing uh, um, here's the the improved wrench with the two sides of it you know and and this thing is great it's super strong and if if I take a second so here's here's a tile uh, this tile actually I think has a problem with its southwest connector uh, so I'm gonna have to see if I can diagnose that better uh, uh, but that's the reason it's being taken out uh, of the step as it goes so here's a new foot uh, uh, for the thing it goes in the wrench uh, uh, like this if you're <coughs> if you're weirded out uh, by like screeching nails on the uh, chalkboard watch out for this because when we get down to the bottom the thing is going to scream uh, uh, but here it is so now we've got our, our, our wrench that we can use to hold it down and There, see it actually bottoms out, and then we have uh, another foot on it, and it goes on to the connectors uh, pretty well. It holds, it pops off. So, very nice. Take all that, put it all together, and you can now do this. <laughs> Look at this. I can pick it up. Uh, we've got all of these uh, uh, three buys, and there's actually all kinds of different ways that you can arrange these straps. I don't completely understand it. Uh, um, this is the the keymaster over here, the special one, uh, um, and so on. 
and I want to see if I don't know if I'm running out of time here, but <clears throat> let's see if I can get anywhere with this. Uh, um, if I can boot this thing up uh, and show a, a demo of that as well. I don't know whether we're gonna, we're gonna run too long. Uh, uh, okay. And <clears throat> so we've now uh, gotten. Um, we're, uh, we'll just leave that. Uh, um, so the, while this is booting up, so uh, almost surely, well, a couple of things. Almost surely not all of these will come up. And that, in fact, is the uh, the non-deterministic system D problem that is, is still being a problem. I still do not have a solution on knowing exactly how these things are going to work out. Uh, um, and... Of course, it's taking its sweet time uh, uh, to boot. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, uh, well, encouraging. Got fairly far. Uh, um, wow. Looks like maybe we got a complete boot. Uh, um, and did I miss it? I missed it. All right. So um, now I'm talking to the keymaster here, and um, what I want to do is uh, see if I can demonstrate doing a, an actual change of, of code. And if you, I'm, I'm going to skip over it because we're real late on time, but. Uh, if you look at the testing the uh, Lotus T2 tile Lotus where I tried to push code from one to the other with the CDM copy MFC file it's very weird it looks like the the thing moves in one direction and then all of a sudden other things start coming in uh, to the thing where it should be going out why did that happen it was a bug it was a bug in the stats display now we've got a whole new stats display isn't this cool look at all the information that we have down the side we have the grid volt Voltage, the, the center temperature, the edge temperature, the amount of light we're getting. We got the frequency that the CPU is running at. By default, I set these things to all 720 megahertz. They can go a, a thousand megahertz, they can go a gigahertz, but it takes, uh, it generates more heat. Uh, by the way, the fact that we now have these things up on little feet uh, to get clear underneath it makes the uh, operating temperature uh, quite a bit lower and tipping it up so that you can just get convection going uh, through it makes it a little bit better as well. So I'm having a little bit less of a worry about the whole thing melting down uh, um, because of the heat. And in fact, I'm hoping we will be able to benchmark it at uh, a one gigahertz when it comes time to do it. Uh, uh, so now they all automatically display the debugging uh, output when they first start up and then they switch uh, to the uh, MFM, but I'd rather see the debugging thing uh, permanently if I could. Uh, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so this is the Perl script that's actually running uh, this thing, uh, the display, the debug display, and so on. Uh, so it's TNV. Sure. Uh, here it is. Okay. So, oh, there it is. Uh, uh, see, I already did it. Uh, well, but that's a, oh, okay. Well, all right. That's all, that's fine. So, look, this guy says demo here on the last line. No, none of these other guys do. That that's the demo I'm preparing to do. And all right, there it is. Uh, so the idea is is the way we make this move is the make file has a special target called CDM distribution. So we'll build that, and that's going to produce a new MFZ file. Uh, which we can only do on the, uh, and there it is, uh, TGG, yes, that's it. And we just copy that to uh, the common directory. And now the uh, CDM, uh, the, the, the common data manager, should recognize this. Uh, and... Um,
tell you what, I'm gonna, oh, it, there it is. So it saw that it, it changed, it's now gonna load it and install it on itself. Uh, uh, step one, that's also a new thing that it can do. And um, after it's installed it on itself, it will start announcing it to its neighbors. And hopefully the neighbors will then pull it down, install it themselves, start running and <clears throat> all right so there it is <clears throat> it installed it itself <clears throat> and it should go it should remember that it was displaying the okay so now we're back to this but now in particular uh, uh, we should uh, be announcing it to these guys and they should be saying uh, pretty quickly they should be saying yes we would like to see this uh, uh, so we're expecting this guy to be pulling from northwest and this guy to be pulling from west uh, uh, if this in fact is <laughs> is going to work uh, um, and so far nothing yet and this one is running long I don't know I you know and so Alan had Alan Zafetti had a comment in the uh, YouTube comments YouTube comment a couple of weeks ago about I should do more live demos and I should show more failures. Uh, um, do, do people agree? Do you think that doing this sort of thing? Uh, I mean, the problem, of course, being that it's hard to control how long things take. Uh, um, yeah, and. Uh, and and of course, if I if I cut it afterwards, if I tighten it up with little you know YouTube chop it up chop it up <coughs> editing, then uh, how in what sense is it live? Uh, um, so I still don't see it moving. Up oh, there, there we go. Okay, great. This guy's sending it out. This guy's pulling it in, and doesn't look like this guy has picked it up yet uh, um, another thing that you might see is uh, can you see it now there's little red uh, lines along all the edges that are, are not connected and uh, now let's come on let's let's see this guy uh, say demo oh, oh oh all right this this could this could this actually be working? Uh, um. Ah, Timo, Timo, <laughs> how it got to him, uh, how it went right around him, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I suppose it could have gone. I, I don't know. Uh, um, look at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the code push that we wanted to see uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, not sure why this guy didn't get it. I mean, probably if we stop him, maybe he just had a race. So if we go back and now go back to the thing, it, it, presumably maybe he'll have the new guy. Um, and <clears throat> uh, there it is. Okay, demo. Uh, um. All right, uh, episode 40, July 9th, Ring Lotus benchmark ready on a wall. Sorry this ran long. Have a good week. I'm, I'm glad it worked. I'll see you next time.